Hi, I'm Beth Taylor with March on Harrisburg, and I'd like to welcome you to this training on writing letters to the editor that get noticed with a focus on the gift band. So let me bring up my presentation here and we'll get started. Okay, so here we go. Writing letters to the editor that get noticed. So first I'd like to start with a little bit about March on Harrodsburg for those of you that are new to us. Um, so we are a grassroots organization focused on fixing our democracy, eradicating corruption from Harrisburg and creating a government that represents all of us, not just the wealthy few. We are nonpartisan. We do not endorse candidates or parties. Our nonpartisan stance is more than a refusal to endorse a candidate. We believe that corruption in the government is not and has never been limited to one political party or politician. We're also statewide. We have seven chapters across the state. We organize everywhere and across all lines of division. We have been especially active in the districts of every legislative leader. We are also volunteer driven. We currently have two full-time and one part-time staff, but we are driven by our volunteer leaders, our chapter members, and our working groups. What we do, so we lobby, we've lobbied almost everyone in the state legislature. We march, we've marched 265 miles, twice from Philadelphia to Harrisburg and once from Lancaster to Harrisburg. And we're looking at planning another march for next spring. Um, and we've also uh, organized and held 29 nonviolent direct actions over the past year. We educate, the struggle is the classroom and we are constantly teaching and learning. We work to develop leaders. So we work to organize and create clear, competent, committed and connected leaders um, who are capable of doing the hard work and organizing the moral fusion movement necessary uh, to win democracy. We have a 23 policy platform that are our legislative priorities. Um, and we believe these policies are a pathway to Pennsylvania becoming a shining example for democracy and ensuring that every Pennsylvanian has a dignified and meaningful voice in government, regardless of age, race, gender, sexual orientation, ability, or wealth. We need all 23 of these policies to be implemented and we are fighting for all of them all of the time. But we do have a top five that we are focusing on at the moment. And these are um, establishing a public campaign financing system of democracy dollars, enacting a gift ban, instituting ranked choice voting, maintaining, strengthening, and expanding vote by mail, and preventing judicial gerrymandering. So let's dive in to writing letters to the editor. So why write a letter to the editors? It's really common for uh, people to say, uh, you know, I hear it a lot that no one reads the paper anymore, writing letters uh, to the editor is a waste of time, why should I do it? And uh, this isn't true, it's not a waste of time. Readership is down, but people still do read the, the paper and letters to the editor are a great advocacy tool beyond reaching readers. So legislators pay attention to local media. They have staff that checks local media in their districts that, and look for stories that include their names. Um, it can influence, letters to the editor can influence newspaper coverage. They send signals to editors of the newspaper that this is a topic readers are interested in, especially when um, the paper receives multiple letters about the same issue um, from different readers over a period of time. And they're more likely to run stories about your issue because of this. And an article or editorial that many readers respond to is more likely to be followed up with future articles on the same topic. Uh, you know, and it's best to keep the debate going on an issue by continuing to send in letters um, on a regular basis. And they reach a wide audience and they also raise awareness and call people and legislators to action. Identifying letter to the editor opportunities. So letters to the editor are great ways to one, highlight or respond to an issue of concern, and two, to respond to a story, op-ed, another letter to the editor, et cetera, um, that you've seen in, in the paper. 
so L, um, letters to the editor are more likely to get published if you're responding to an article or another item in the paper. And you'll want to respond within two to three days um, after the original article is published. And the so the, this news hierarchy here shows um, the best news articles to respond to in order of importance. So your letter is more likely to be published if you're responding to an editorial. Um, and then your chances decrease as we move down the list. So um, editorials, front page stories, local op-eds, editorial cartoons, syndicated columnists, other letters to the editor, and inside news stories, meaning news stories on the inside pages of the newspaper, not um, the front page. So now we're going to get into the um, specifics of how to write your letter to the editor. So the first step is to identify the problem, local angle, or specific article you're writing about. You want to try to keep your sentence to five words or under. This is really hard to do, but it's really effective if you can get um, a good hook, a good sentence, a short sentence that um, you know hooks your readers and draws people in. So really take time to craft that first sentence um, that's an intent, uh, that is um, an attention getter and is short and pithy. So um, five words or less if you can, um, you know, a couple words extra, you know, is okay, but the shorter the better. And so this first step, this is your first paragraph. This is your hook to get your readers interested in what you're writing about and to make them want to read more. And if you're responding to a published piece in the newspaper, like we were just talking about, your first sentence should reference the other article. Um, so the, the second paragraph, you want to elaborate on the problem. What does the problem you've identified mean for Pennsylvanians? How does the problem harm or fail the average Pennsylvania resident? You want to keep it simple and use plain language that most people will understand. So your third paragraph, you want to state your opinion about, um, you, you want to, sorry, you want to describe your solution. Um, and doing this, you're going to state your opinion about what should be done and possible remedies to the issue. Uh, number four, this is your fourth paragraph. You want to be specific. You want to provide um, good reasons for why you support your proposed solution. You want to provide reputable evidence to substantiate any claims that you make. In your last paragraph, you want to close with a call to action. This is really important. You want to wrap up your letter with a line that lets readers know how to get involved or learn more. Um, again, be specific. For example, provide a link to a specific event you want them to attend or if you're requesting a legislator to do something, mention the target by their name. Who is the change maker that you're trying to reach that you want to take action? Um, this will be picked up by the legislator's staff looking for mentions of the legislator in, in the media. So here we're gonna look at uh, step by step the formula that we just went over and um, talk about it in terms of the gift ban. So number one was identify the problem, local angle, um, or specific article that you're writing about. So for this, we're focusing on um, the, uh, the problem, the issue, um, and not responding, we're not responding to an article in, in this example. So um, our first paragraph, and I think I got this down to the first letter, uh, the first sentence to seven words, which is you know, over five, but um, still pretty short. So it's um, our Pennsylvania legislators embrace corruption in broad daylight. They are gifted, aka bribed, with everything from expensive vacations, endless whining and dining, and even cash gifts, all of which is legal in Pennsylvania. How can we trust our government when they are routine, routinely being corrupted by lobbyists and the mega donors that fund them? Then uh, your second paragraph, you're going to elaborate on the problem. Public trust holds our society together. If we trust each other, we survive and thrive. If we don't, 
We cannot come together to solve our problems and we suffer and perish. According to Pew Research in 1964, 77% of Americans trusted their government to do the right thing all or most of the time. Over the last five decades, that number has plummeted to 20%. Then we're gonna go on to describe your solution. Um, and so number three is there is a simple way our elected officials can begin to repair this broken trust. Pass a gift ban now. And then uh, fourth paragraph, you wanna answer why you support this solution. I've been lobbying for a gift ban with March on Harrisburg for two years, demanding that Harrisburg take this easiest of steps to earn our trust. For over four years, our legislators have decided to protect their own corruption instead of working to serve the public. Each day that passes without action on Pennsylvania's legal bribery scheme is another day where corporate lobbyists get to set the agenda. And then paragraph five, we are going to wrap it up with a call to action. Senate President Jake Corman and Senate State Government Committee Chairman David Argo have the power to pass SB 401, the gift ban. Now is the time for them to act. They need to put in the honest, good faith work to make corruption illegal before our society further fractures into polarized chaos. Pennsylvania citizens, if you agree that bribery should be illegal, join March on Harrisburg in demanding a gift ban. Get involved at giftban.org. So this last paragraph, um, we uh, called out our targets by name, specified what we want them to do. And we also um, call, put a call to action to Pennsylvania citizens who uh, are interested in uh, working on the issue of illegalizing bribery, the gift ban, and also gave them a way to get involved. So very clear call to action. Um, I just wanna emphasize that that's really important um, for a good letter to the editor and to uh, make it as um, useful to uh, your organization uh, as possible. So now we're gonna cover some tips on writing letters to the editor. First, you wanna keep it brief. You wanna to stick to 150 to 300 words max. And you always wanna check the word count requirement of the paper that you're submitting your letter to and make sure that you stay within it. If your letter exceeds the word limit, the paper will cut it and you probably won't like the edits they make. So remember that less is better. You wanna be quick, clear, and concise. You wanna state your, your key point at the very beginning of your letter and stay on issue. You wanna be inspirational, include solutions and don't be all doom and gloom. And you wanna be firm, but polite. You want to avoid sounding too angry or outraged. Or, um, this is about really about maintaining your authority. The louder and angrier and ruder you are, the less power people perceive you as having. So you, you kind of want to always approach people as just um, the, the people that are reading your letter that you're directing your letter to as slightly misinformed and you're giving them the information they need um, to make a good informed decision and choice and action. You wanna make it relevant. You wanna tie your letters to current events like we were just, um, or recent articles like we were just talking about. Um, you wanna make it personal and local. Explain why you care about the issue. What will make readers relate to you? You wanna share personal stories, um, share anecdotes and data. You wanna use your own words. So we, um, March in Harrisburg, we provide templates for you to use on different issues, but you always wanna modify the provided template um, and the talking points we provide to reflect your own voice. This is really impo um, important. Letters, um, newspapers generally won't print like canned letters. So you really need to take the information, take the templates and use them as a starting point and use your own voice. And you want to be accurate. You wanna fact check your information and you can refer to position papers and our policy platform that we provide. You want to proofread, reread your letter, check for grammar and spelling mistakes, and you can um, you're, feel free to post 
your letter to the editor in, in our uh, March in Harrisburg Slack asking for feedback and a proofread, and we are happy to do that. Uh, and I, I would really, I really like to stress that you don't need to be an expert. You just need to express your position as a voter, as someone that cares about democracy and corruption in Pennsylvania and why this issue is important to you. Um, really, you are most likely more of an expert on this topic than the lawmakers and reporters are who are generalists and see thousands of bills. Um, you likely know your topic and issue inside and out. And again, as I stressed earlier, you want to ask for action, mention the target and or change maker by name. And um, you wanna ask readers to support your cause and give them a specific way to do so. You can include a link to the March in Harrisburg website or to a specific event inviting people to get involved. And you want to track the news. So um, this is really helpful for finding articles to respond to that you can tie to your issue, um, which makes it more likely that your letter to the editor is gonna get published. So a good way to do this is to set up Google alerts um, for the issue and the newspaper that you're tracking. Um, and also to subscribe to your local newspaper and um, regularly read that. Um, and if you have, for example, um, chapters in your organization, one person in the chapter, um, and each chapter can be responsible for reading the newspaper and um, the local newspaper and looking for articles to respond to. So, and you definitely wanna make writing letters to the editor a group letter. So you wanna submit, uh, submit two or three letters on the topic from different people within the same time frame or over a sustained period of time. So you want to send like, you know, you can send two letters to um, a newspaper every week, um, but you really want to avoid sending the same letters to different papers. So um, when you send letters to the same paper, you want them to be from different people. They can be on the same topic, which is good, but you want them sent from different people. You don't want to send multiple letters um, to the same newspaper from just you. And you want to avoid sending the same letters to different papers. So if you have two local papers, um, you've written one letter, uh, you don't want to send that one letter to both papers. You choose one paper to send it to. You can write a different letter and send it to the other paper, but you don't want to share, you don't want to send the same letter to both. So let's talk now about our gift ban letter to the editor campaign that um, I hope you'll take part in. So here we have some talking points that you can use um, in your letter. And these are also available at giftban.org. We have a letter to the editor guide um, as well as uh, uh, that um, some talking points and our position papers and our policy platform that you can all take a look at that will help you in writing your letter. And again, those are available at giftband.org. So um, let's just briefly go over some of these talking points. So we are supporting um, Senate Bill 401, the gift ban. Um, a point you can make is that public trust is very low and without it, our society fractures legislators need to earn our trust. Um, corruption prevents progress on all other issues. If our collective decision-making process isn't working, then we won't make good decisions. The time is now, is now. We've been at this fighting for a gift ban for over four years and enough is enough. Senate President Jake Corman and Senate State Government Committee David, um, sorry, Senate State Government Committee Chairman David Argel have the power to pass Senate Bill 402, the gift ban. These two men have the power to make this happen. Um, they just need to do it. So um, as I mentioned just a couple seconds ago, we have more info, talking points, and sample letters available in our letter to the editor guide, our position papers, and our policy platform, which are available at giftban.org. So let's organize, let's send out some letters. So we are sending letters right now in May. Um, in fact, we just had one published but from one of our um, uh, volunteers in the Philadelphia Inquirer. And uh, 
Uh, so we are looking to have a sustained campaign throughout the month of May and beyond of sending letters to different newspapers across Pennsylvania. If you are interested in writing a letter, please contact me at info at mohpa.org. Um, send me your name and location and I'll assign you a submission date and a, new, a corresponding newspaper that um, uh, you know corresponds to your location. And I'll send you the info and the instructions and help you along the process of getting your letter submitted. And that about wraps it up. I want to thank you for um, watching this and attending. And um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, my name is Beth Taylor, and you can reach me at info at mohpa.org. Um, and before we go, I do want to highlight a couple of actions that we have coming up. So we have statewide community powered billboarding on May 14th. Um, this is most likely going to be around rush hour, um, evening rush hour. It's going to uh, vary depending on the location um, you're at. So um, you want to contact us at info at mohpa.org if you're interested in attending and helping this. Um, we'll be done safely, social distancing, wearing masks. Um, and you can go to our events page on our website, which is mohpa.org forward slash events. And you can sign up for this um, and get information through uh, the events page. We are also doing um, a Zoom meeting on May 20th, and this is going to be a big meeting. We are planning our nonviolent direct actions around the gift ban, um, which, which we are going to be doing in June. We are going to be um, organizing and uh, in Harrisburg and gathering um, and organizing in Center County. So uh, to find out more about that and to participate in the planning, I encourage you to come out May 20th at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Again, the information is on our events page um, and you need to register for that to get the Zoom information. And we invite you to come out and lobby with us. First time lobbyists are encouraged to attend. We will train you and pair you with somebody um, who has done this before. So. <clears throat> please come out and, and, uh, and join us. We will be in Harrisburg lobbying in person with le uh, in legislators' offices uh, May 25th, June 8th, June 25th, and June 22nd. And you can participate virtually. We have, um, we're holding Zoom meetings with legislators, and those are May 21st, June 11th, and June 19th. So um, if you are interested in any of those, again, email us at info. Um, at mohpa.org or visit our events calendar. And I think that wraps it up and thank you so much. Have a good night.